Afghanistan is known as the grave of empires, and many a foreign power has attempted to take it over, generally not very successfully. In today's episode of Airsoft Loadouts, we're going to have a look at a Mujahideen warrior from the Soviet-Afghan conflict, and then we'll have a look at modernising that loadout to bring it up to date for more modern conflicts. Before we crack on and talk about the loadout, I just want to say that this is a very much a themed film sim loadout. It's not really out there for your average Sunday skirmish, and I'm very much not trying to cause offence to anybody by wearing cultural garments. It's very much done out of respect for the forces that fought out there. So as ever, we're going to start with our basic loadout, and our basic loadout as normal, doesn't include your eye pro of your choice and also your footwear. Today I've gotten these brown leather walking shoes. However, normally I'd probably wear a pair of black leather boots, which whilst maybe not completely accurate to the period, aren't gonna stand out and affect anyone's game either. Fundamentally, the most recognizable garment that you will see is what they call in the British Army, a dish dash, this white garment here. Now, this one was made for me by my partner as sort of an airsoft compromise rather than completely period correct garment. You can, however, buy something very similar, including some bottoms as well, if you go onto eBay or Amazon and search for something like Shawa Kameez or a Kurta, and I'll put the search terms down at the bottom there for you. These normally come as a two-part set, so you get the top and the bottoms. So here are some photos of actual Mujahideen from the Soviet Afghan war to show you the range of colors and styles that they were using to help you when you search for your own clothing. Probably best to go for a neutral or earth tone, like the ones in the photos, and that will help camouflage you on the airsoft battlefield as well. For my bottoms today, I've actually got an old pair of Soviet Gorka One trousers on. On my head, I'm wearing a shamag. Again, these have loads of different names depending on what part of the world you're from. But if you search for shamag, and again, I'll drop that on the bottom on eBay or Amazon, absolutely tons will turn up. You can get some quite tactical ones now with skulls and guns all over them. Just get something with a really standard pattern. There are a million and one ways of tying these around your head. I'm not going to show you them now. Just search for how to tie a shimag on YouTube and you'll get a ton of options. Probably the second most recognizable thing I'm wearing is my Chicom chest rig. Used all over the world by absolutely everybody and I pretty much think every airsofter should have one in their wardrobe anyway. It takes three AK mags and some smaller pockets for grenades and oil bottles and extra bits. Very light, super hard wearing, fantastic bit of kit to have. There are also some versions with four cells on the front, so you can get one of those as well. This loadout, if you get a shower camisa or a kurta with the pants as well as the top, Chicom and a shamag, easily under 50 quid. It's one of the cheapest airsoft loadouts you can do. Okay, so this is the next stage of our loadout today, and I've just added a few low-cost items to really bring that loadout up to another level. So the first one is my pack all hat. These are very commonly used for, for an airsoft. They're really, they're from a very specific region. They're from Pakistan and the bordering areas of Afghanistan, and they weren't that widely used outside of those areas. So if you go into a game set somewhere else, maybe think twice about using one. The next item I'm wearing, and this is pretty ubiquitous, is a patu, and this is an Afghan wool blanket. These are, you see these all over the place, being used for bedding, being used for seating, being used for an extra warmth layer to shelter you from the wind. And again, they're a really great addition. And also being brown, it's quite a good camouflage. And then the last item, as it's always good to carry water on the airsoft field, is this Chinese RPD drum mag pouch. And inside, I've just got a 58 pattern water ball just to carry a bit of water out on the game. You could also carry some spare BBs, your radio if you want one of those, and some other bits with it. So this is some super cheap options. The Packall and the Patu were both around eight to 10 pounds each. The water bottle pouch was about six quid on eBay. And just, as you can see, with just a few low cost items, you can really bring your loadout on. The other thing about the Patu and the Packall is they were used by Western Special Forces in the early global war on terror, and probably nowadays to blend into the local population a bit and to reduce their visibility. So again, some fantastic things along with the Chicom just to have in your airsoft wardrobe anyway. Yeah. 
So with weapons, something to bear in mind is that the Americans were fundamentally bankrolling the fight against the Soviet invaders in Afghanistan, and they were supplying the Mujahideen with a variety of weapons, largely of non-American origin. So any sort of Cold War, particularly Soviet and Chinese weapons, are totally suitable. So for our loadout today, we've picked probably the most iconic weapon used, and that's an AK-47. In this case, it's an AKM uh, replica with Ishmash stampings from LCT. Firing the ubiquitous 7.62x39mm round. However, any Soviet weaponry from the 1950s up to the 1980s onwards is absolutely suitable. So before the Soviets turned up in Afghanistan, the main enemy was the British. So you could use something like this old Enfield rifle or other similar bolt action rifles. So we've moved on a bit later in the Afghan conflict against the Russians and our fighter has picked up a western coat, in this case an M65 jacket from the US and he's also managed to capture himself a Russian belt onto which he's placed a few pouches. So I've got a few leather ammunition pouches, really handy just to put a few bits and bobs and your knickknacks in when you're playing a game and I've also put on an extra little satchel to carry some extra stuff around with me and I've tucked those underneath my belt so they don't flop around when I'm running. Again, these items are really cheap. You can get an M65 for about 20 to 40 pounds on eBay without too much trouble. These Russian belts are about a tenner and the pouches and my little bag you can pick up all over the place for just a few pounds. So this time we've taken our Middle Eastern regular soldier and moved him forward 20 years to serve in more recent conflicts. This time he's picked up a Russian AK-74 still using his Chicom and his Packle hat, though he's managed to acquire probably a knockoff Adidas tracksuit top from a local market, and he's using some Russian VSR 93 trousers recovered from a battlefield. As you can see, this is one of the most flexible airsoft loadouts you can possibly have. You can use elements of it, a conflict spanning 40 years, and you'll still be looking great. So thanks for watching AA TV. I've been your host Tom Amble Hibbard, talking about Middle Eastern irregular soldiers through the ages. I really hope you've enjoyed this and stick around because I'm sure we'll be doing many more in the future. If you want to help support the project, you can join our Patreon scheme and help keep the channel as independent as possible. If you want to make a one-off contribution, why not buy one of our t-shirts from our Teespring store? Most importantly, stay safe and we'll see you soon.